All right, these little guys are more complicated than I thought. They are pressure sensors. So um, I did uh, take a couple off and uh, I've opened them up. And uh, so first of all, we, we can see here they have a little tube on the top. Okay, so that's where the uh, air can go in and out of. And uh, then the back uh, has a part number. So I was able to look up the data sheet. We'll look at the data sheet in a little, in a little, little bit here. But let's, let's take a look inside. I was able to open up the package and you can see inside there are what look like two chips. And so there's one chip, it's got a bunch of bond wires coming off of it, the thing kind of gold colored. This is, the reason it's kind of that color is that there's goo, the goo is over the top of it to, to uh, make, 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 to passivate it or whatever. Um, and the other little section there that, that square is actually a, um, is the pressure sensor. So it's like a piezoelectric strain gauge and um, the air, uh, that little square rectangles on the opposite side of that little tube. And so the tube can either bow that, that, that thin, it's a, it's a real thin piece of something. And when you bow it in the direction, it causes strain in it. And then you can measure that in a, uh, in a bridge circuit. So yeah, it's like a little diaphragm. It, it'll move in and out with the pressure. And so that, that little, that little, uh, uh piezoelectric, uh, diaphragm is what does all the sensing. Now the other chip is going to be a, uh, uh, analog circuit to measure the voltage change and create some type of signal for it. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty fancy part. And even though it's an eight legged part, only three, three pins are used uh, power ground and, and an output. So yeah, let's take a look at the data sheet. It, it's uh, pretty amazing. All right. So these are made by Honeywell. And uh, these are the ASDX uh, silicon pressure sensors. So uh, I don't know if that's a piece of silicon that does the uh, that does the actual pre you know strain gauge type of thing. Um, and let's see here, radiometric 12-bit output. Okay, so part of that fancy die is is a 12-bit uh, D to A of some type. Uh, precision, blah, 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 compensated, use it for all kinds of cool stuff. All right, let's take a look at the rest of the data sheet here. Uh, five volt part supply. Oh, wait a minute. No, it's not. Uh, the absolute max of the supply voltage is six volts, but you can either operate it at 3.3 or 5 volts. So you can do, you can do either one. So that's pretty cool. Uh, two and a half milliamps, blah, 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 blah. Uh, here's how the part numbers work. And then, uh, the output is basically a voltage dependent on, uh, pressure. And it's an output of the power supply. So it's a percentage of the output power supply. So you need to have a regulated power supply if you want to use these accurately. Otherwise it's going to scale with the power supply voltage, but yeah, uh, it goes between 10% of, uh, the VCC to 90% of the VCC from minimum pressure to maximum pressure. And then you can buy different units to do different pressures. Um, and here they are. Yeah. See, here's the, uh, pin out it's uh supply out and ground. And then everything else is a no connect, even though they're all bonded out though, it's must be for testing. They're all bonded out to do something, but it says don't connect them to anything. And yeah, there you go. So, um, inside is going to be a, uh, bridge, uh, and the device will be inside that bridge and then it will look at differential voltages and run that into analog circuitry and then determine things and then output a voltage depending on, I don't know, it's, it's certainly comp certainly a complicated die in there. It's not just a simple voltage type thing. So yeah, it's certainly, it's certainly calibrated for pressure, probably because of the, 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 the membrane is going to be nonlinear and it's probably has a bunch of cal stuff in it and everything. It's all figured out. 
So uh, there you go for looking at it. I say the next step is to maybe, uh, we might be able to just measure one you know, on this board. I'll try to figure out maybe where the power goes in and where the voltage comes out and we can just probe this board and maybe put some pressure on it and see, see what we see here. Here's a test point. Hmm, that's interesting. TP1. I wonder what that does. Maybe we can use TP1. I don't know. Might be hard to figure this board out because I believe it is four layers. So, but yeah, let me uh, let me stare at it a bit. All right, I have five volts connected to uh, the sensors, and I have the oscilloscope hooked up to pin two on this device, and I'll be looking at it over here. And what I'm going to be doing is using this uh, squeegee bulb here. I'm going to I'm going to put it over the uh, over the pin here and squeeze it. Okay. And you can watch it over there. Whoop. I have to hold it on two hands. There we go. It goes up. I can get it up. Right. Ah, grip strength meter. <laughs> I can get it up to maybe 900. Oh, go. Ah, there we go. 900 millivolts. It kind of starts out at 500 millivolts and goes up from there. So, uh, yeah, up and down and up and down. As long as you squeeze on the, squeeze on the bulb. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So squeeze, 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 squeeze. All right. Well, there you go. I don't know what I'm going to do with these things, but they're kind of fun. If I ever need a pressure sensor, I'll have uh, one, two, three, four of them.